ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله وفهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أكرمه بنبوته وجعله رحمة للعالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله All the servants of Allah I advise you and I advise myself before I advise you to observe the necessity of holding on to taqwa to be conscious of our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to refrain from committing evil deeds and to be all the time aware of our deeds that whatever we do Allah is there watching us Amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah, uh, surah Ali Imran, Surah number 3, verse number 102. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun sadaq allahul aliyyul azim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah o you who believe fear allah that allah should be feared haqqa tuqati the way and the, the way he should be feared وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ And do not die إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Until you are in a state of submission to Allah except in a state of Islam. We continue the subject of taqwa that is piety or God consciousness which we should strive to attain to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is the only protection that we have which provides us protection in this world and against the punishment in the hereafter the day when the consequences of our deeds will become apparent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, uh, in uh, Surah uh, uh, Al-Baqarah Surah number 2 verse number 123 وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا that will be the day when no soul will avail another soul in the list on that day there is no person who will be able to come to the rescue of another person it's going to be nafsa nafsi you'll be all alone by yourself to account for your deeds in sermon 191 in Nahjul Balagha it's Al-Wasiyya Bizzuhd wa taqwa in which Imam Ali alayhi salam Imam Ali alayhi salam gives us advice on self-denial abstinence and taqwa what does he say? Usikum ibad Allah bi taqwa Allah I've just said I advise your servants of Allah that you should have fear of Allah. <coughs> and then he says something very important. فَإِنَّ التَّقْوَى فِي الْيَوْمِ الْحِرْزُ وَالْجُنَّةِ For taqwa, for today, 
is our protection and our shield for today. Wa fi ghadin at tariqu ila al jannah and for tomorrow it is the way to paradise. So how important taqwa is. Let us see the definition of taqwa muttaqin which is given in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the very beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number one and two, Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. Alif Lam Mim. ذلك, ذلك is, means that. هذا is this. But here, I mean, it will take time to actually explain why Allah says ذلك, but it means this is the book in which there is no doubt indeed. A book of what? Of guidance. For whom? For the muttaqeen. This ayah makes it very, very clear that the holy book of Quran is a book of guidance for the muttaqeen. It is only the muttaqeen who observe taqwa who will benefit from the guidance of the Holy Quran. The consequence of observing taqwa is that when you undertake any work or any business, you will definitely, definitely be guided and directed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as to what course of action you should take. He will guide you in his ways if you observe taqwa. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the last verse of Surah Al-Ankabut, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Those people who strive in us, fina. This is the very, very strong word used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says not in me, but fina in us. لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا We shall guide them in our ways. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah is with those who do good. This is the most promising assurance for those who strive in the way of Allah, the muttaqeen. Now, let us see what are the means for acquiring taqwa. There is a means. How do you acquire the knowledge for attaining taqwa? The Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam following the teachings of the Quran and the Bayt reciting the Quran memorizing it of course carries so much thawab but what is more important is to understand to reflect to ponder over its verses and apply in our daily lives there are so many people who recite the Quran and the Quran curses them the Quran sends la'na on them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, Rubba tali al-Qur'ani wal-Qur'anu yal'anhu. There are people who recite the Quran without due regard to the way it should be recited and the Quran sends la'na on them, curses them. Who are these people? These are the people who recite the Quran haphazardly without paying any attention to the way it should be recited, without paying any attention to makharij al huruf, the makharij and the rules of recitation. Now, reciting properly is not the speciality or the prerogative of. Uh, some experts, reciters of the Holy Quran, but it is an obligation upon each and every one of us. We must bear in mind that this is the Kalamullah, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must not take it lightly but seriously and must make efforts even at this age, even if you are old, it's not difficult. There are so many facilities nowadays. You can go on online, you can spend half an hour every day and recite the Quran properly. Because sometimes what happens, we make some very serious mistakes and according to some books, it actually amounts to gunah-e-saghira. Just one word 
Alif and Ain changes the whole meaning of the Quran. Dhamma and Fatha changes the whole meaning of Quran. We say, Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Faraja. We pray to Allah to hasten the appearance of uh, Imam Zaman Alayhi Salam. What happens? But when you say, Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Faraja means don't come. Delay is coming. Look at the difference. Ajjala also, like Israel say, Ajali, it means death. So it should be Ajjala. We say, Sirat al an'amta alayhim. Please guide us to the path that you have blessed us. And just one fatha, you say, Sirat al an'amtu alayhim. Guide me to that path which I have blessed. So we need to be very, very careful. This is the Quran, my dear. Another group of people that the Quran rebukes severely are those reciters and those memorizers of the Quran whose conduct and whose behavior com is completely against the teachings of the Quran. During the Umayyad and the Abbasid period, there were people who read the Quran, who memorized the Quran, but they committed the most heinous crime against Ahlul Bayt السلام, and against their followers. We see the most horrible crimes committed today by the Yazids of today, the likes of ISIS and other extremist Salafi groups who distort and pervert the teachings of the Quran and commit the most heinous crimes against anyone who does not agree with them or conform to their beliefs. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to eliminate these depraved and deviant people. The next two ayat identify what are the qualities of the muttaqeen. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghaybi wa yuqimuna as-salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqoon. These are the people alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. They are the people who believe in the unseen. Wa yuqimuna as-salata they establish prayer. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And they spend out of what we have provided them. Now let us see the first uh, quality is غَيْب. What does غَيْب mean? غَيْب means something that we cannot see or cannot understand through our five senses or through reason. These include belief in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it includes belief in his essence and his attributes, in the angels, in the, uh, in the hereafter, in hell and heaven. These are all the things which we cannot see. So the quality of a muttaqi, the first one is that he has to believe in the unseen ghaib. salata, And those who are steadfast in their prayer. Allah uses the word yuqimun. Allah did not say alladheena yusalloon there is a difference between yuqimoon and yusalloon yusalloon is those who say their prayers yuqimoon is the word from iqama they establish their prayers who are these people they are the one who correct who observe all the conditions for the saying of your prayers that is they are regular in their prayers they pray with concentration and they pray with humility the third quality is alms giving, infaq. They are, these are the people who spend out of what Allah has provided them. The simple phrase, wa mimma razaqnahum. This gives us an inspiration, it inspires us that we must spend out of what Allah has given us because that is the gift we must realize that has been given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It draws our attention to that fact. Anything, that everything that we possess is from none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the next three ayat describe about three, the next ayat, number, uh, number four, describe about the other three qualities. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ These are the people who believe in what has been revealed to you, that is to the Prophet, 
and what has been revealed to those before you, to those other messengers, and وَبِلْ أَخِرَتِهُمْ يُوْقِنُونَ and they are certain of the hereafter. Then immediately, immediately after these six qualities, Allah says, أُولَئِكَ عَلَى هُدَمْ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ these are the people who are on true guidance from their Lord. And these are the people who are successful. Therefore, Allah gives us the definition of the people of taqwa, people who are on guidance from their Lord. These are who? Those who believe the, in the unseen, those who are steadfast in their prayer, those who spend out of what Allah has given them, those who believe in what Allah has uh, revealed to the Prophet, and to those before him, and those pe who people who believe in the hereafter. Now, taqwa is not just for the select group of religious people. Islam's belief and requirement of taqwa differs from that held by Hinduism, Buddhism, and Christianity, especially the Roman Catholic and the Eastern Orthodox Church. They stress the Hinduism, the Christian Christianity, and the Buddhism. They, they stress separation or polarization between the life of a person who, is, who has a sacred vocation, who is a religious person, and the ordinary person. But this is not the case with Islam. Islam dismisses separation and polarization. A Hindu may say, there are certain rules of religion. For example, he can eat, not eat meat. For, oh no, he says, for example, not eating meat is only, the work, is only applies to the Brahmin. They are the special people. But I can eat meat if I want. This is their belief. They, they separate the two things, the religious people and the laity. I don't have to do this. Well, this is what the uh, Hindu will say. Or that because I am just an ordinary person. A Muslim cannot say that. He cannot say that I don't have to observe taqwa or I don't have to do certain things because I am just an ordinary, I am not a religious type of person. No. This point is emphasized in the Holy Quran where the word taqwa and the attributes associated with taqwa appear more than 250 times in the Holy Quran. And it is addressed to all Muslims. It is addressed to all Muslims without regard to their position or in the society. In Surah Al-Hashr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wal tanzur nafsun ma qaddamat lighad wa attaqu Allah inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun. Oh, you who believe, be careful of your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let every person, every soul, look at what provision he has sent forth tomorrow. Every person. And observed. Allah repeats taqwa two times here. Allah observed taqwa. Allah is well aware of what you do. In Ahsan al Hadith, Abla al Mawadir Kitab, Allah, 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 The entire world is currently focusing its attention to the recent shooting of a Rus Russian warplane in, by Turkey, the killing of innocent people in Paris by Daesh, and the Syrian refugee crisis. These are the items of e events which are featuring in so many channels today. The BBC, the Sky, C CNN, and so many ch channels around the world have been featuring such events. Sadly, these and other channels have completely ignored a humanitarian catastrophe unfolding in Yemen as a result of unlawful airstrikes carried out by Saudi Arabia on a heavily populated sites in Yemen since the 26th of March this year. The so-called custodian of Haramein Sharifain did not even care to observe the sacred months of Ramadan and Muharram 
and continue to destroy the most impoverished nation in the Arab world, Yemen. Yemen, one of the oldest civilizations in Islam. Cluster bombs, bunker bombs, and other forbidden missiles are raining down on innocent civilians day in and day out. The destruction of hospitals, health facilities, schools, airports, ports, and Yemen's infrastructure have left millions stranded. These so-called Muslims have not even spared mosques. Saudi Arabia is well known in history for the destruction of the most historical and holy sites. There is no electricity, no fuel, no gas for cooking, no water, no food, no hospitals. Why the destruction of the only oxygen-producing factory in Yemen, I wonder, I ask myself. Why the destruction of 35 hospitals and clinics? Yemenis are dying in hospital for lack of medicine because of Saudi strikes and sea blockade. Thousands of people have died as a result of Saudi bombing. People have lost their families, they have lost their homes, they have lost their businesses. Children have lost their families and their future, their parents. With the closure of schools, colleges and universities since the 26th of March, five million students have lost the whole year of their education. Five million students. Yemen is cut off from the world by radio, media and internet. And instead in its place, Saudi Arabia have installed their own channels to broadcast their propaganda against the Houthis. Citing the disastrous humanitarian consequences of the crisis in Yemen, the United Nations Special Envoy on Situation told Security Council on 23rd of October that the ongoing violence in Yemen has left the country bleeding and its cities collapsing. And he added that peace talks are the only way to restore hope of Yemeni people after all the suffering they have gone through. In his briefing to the Council, United Nations Special Envoy Ismail Old Sheikh Ahmed said the ongoing fighting has levied a heavy toll on Yemen's civilian population. Alhamdulillah, our Khoja Shia Isnashris have been safely evacuated by the World Federation from Yemen's war zone to a temporary destination in Djibouti. Many had lived in Yemen for years and are now waiting to be resettled. These families have lost everything. They have lost their homes. They have lost their businesses. Many of them were professionals holding good positions but are now destitute. There are 456 refugees, 108 families, registered with the United Nations High Commission for Refugees under the care of the World Federation in Djibouti. Among the elderly are 80 to 90 years old and living with very limited facilities. They are in urgent need of medical assistance. Our youth who have left schooling halfway are now left without any educational institution to pursue their studies. There is also a crisis of newborn babies and children waiting to be moved to secure homes and schools. Alhamdulillah, the World Federation is doing whatever it can to alleviate the problems of our brothers and sisters in Djibouti, but their success largely depends upon your help and support. Our brothers and sisters need your support. We must act urgently and act now to protect them from the dangers of war, disease and hunger. Please give whatever you can to this very noble cause. You can take, contact the World Federation as to how you can help them financially. Allah says in the Holy Quran, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ And for those who spend their wealth by night and day, secretly or openly, they shall have their reward from their Lord, and they shall have no fear, nor shall they grieve. May Allah save the people, subhanahu wa ta'ala, save the people of Yemen from the most brutal and savage war waged against them by Saudi Arabia. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدَ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدِ لَمْ يَلِدُ وَلَمْ يُولَدُ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحليم الكريم غافر الذنب وقابل التوب وهو الغفور الرحيم سبحان من سبقت رحمته غضبه وبسط اليدين بالرحمة سبحان من لم يكلف نفسا إلا دون وسعها وعفى عن السيئات ولم يجاز بها سبحان من لا يزداد على معاصي العباد إلا كرما وجودا وعلى كثرة الذنوب إلا عفوا وصفحا نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو العطوف على العباد بجوده والعواد على المذنبين بحلمه ونشهد أن محمد نبيه وحبيبه سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين بعثه رحمة للعالمين صلى الله عليه وآله الداعين إلى سبيل الله بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة قادة الأمم وأولياء النعم ومعدن الرحمة اللهم صل على سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وعلى إمام المسلمين وقائل الغر المحجلين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صلوات الله عليه وآله وعلى سيدة نساء العالمين وبضعة خاتم النبيين سيدتنا فاطمة بنت رسول الله صلوات الله عليها وعلى الحسن المجتبى والحسين الشهيد بكربلاء وعلي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي عليهم الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على مولانا صاحب الزمان ماحي آثار البدع والطغيان هادي بأبنية الشرك والنفاق حاصل فروع البغي والشقاق صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آبائه الكرام ما اتصلت الليالي والأيام اللهم عجل فرجه وسهل مخرجه واكهل ناظرنا بنظرة منا إليه واجعلنا من المستشهدين بين يديه وتفضل على أمرائنا المؤمنين بمزيد التوفيقات وازدياد الإقبال وعلو الدرجات اللهم افعل بنا ما أنت أهله ولا تفعل بنا ما نحن أهله بجاه محمد وآله المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين اللهم اجعلنا ممن يتذكر فتنفعه الذكرى إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون